Let's build our intuition about the definition of matrix column vector multiplication via dot products by looking at a concrete example. Specifically, we'll find the individual entries of the output vector B, which is going to be a matrix A multiplied by X, where A is going to be a 4 by 3 matrix given with integer coefficients, and then X is going to be a 3 by 1 vector. You might recognize these as the exact same data that we used to explore the matrix column vector multiplication definition via linear combinations. In fact, we're going to show that the output that we got from that other definition is identical to the output that we're going to get here. Before we dive in, we'll do a quick recall that if we want to calculate the ith entry of the vector B, what we're going to do is take the ith row of A, transpose it so that it's a column vector, and then dot it with the vector x. In other words, when we're solving a problem in math, one of the best things that we can do at the beginning of that problem is actually write relevant information in our own terms. So remember that the ith entry of B is going to be the ith row of A transpose dotted with x, which if we write the ith row of A as a column vector, it's going to be AI1, AI2, all the way down to AIN. The index for the row stays the same. We move across the columns. This is going to be an n by 1. x by definition is going to be an n by 1. When we find the output of this dot product, we take the first entry multiplied by the first entry, that's AI1 times x1, plus second entry multiplied by second entry, AI2, x2, all the way to the last entry, AIN times xn. With that definition at hand, let's start with our first entry. In this case, we'll start with the entry i equal to 1. Remember, since a is a 4 by 3, x is a 3 by 1, the inner dimensions must agree. Those cancel out, and the output's going to be a 4 by 1, which means we're going to do four separate calculations for when i equals 1, i equals 2, i equals 3, i equals 4. For the first entry, b1, that's going to be the first row of a treated as a column vector, in other words, transposed, dotted with the vector x. We know that the first row of a is going to be a 1 by 3. So specifically, the transpose is going to be a 3 by 1. Remember, this is going to be a11, a12, a13, which means the transpose is going to be a11, a12, a13. When we dot out with the vector x, that's going to be x1, x2, x3, and we produce a11, x1 plus a12, x2 plus a13, x3. If we do a quick recall of what a and x were, a11 is going to be negative 3, x1 is going to be 5, so this is negative 3 times 5, plus a12 is going to be 4, x2 is going to be 2, that's by the definition, and then a13 is going to be negative 3, x3 is going to be negative 2. So now we have this calculation. We can do each output individually. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. 4 times 2 is 8. Negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. 15 plus 8 is going to be negative 7. 6 plus negative 7 is going to be negative 1. So we know that the first entry of our output vector b is going to be negative 1 given this definition. Some of my students ask me, why do you write down all of the steps? Why wouldn't you just jump to this step or even that step? And my statement is always, well, what's the point of the example? If we look at the actual math, this math is almost trivial in the sense that we probably learned this in grade school. My claim is that the point of the example is not to get the answer, but to create a practice opportunity to apply the definition in various circumstances and cement that definition into our memory. From that standpoint, by the end of my analysis, I will have written this definition out four separate times and gotten practice, which solidifies the knowledge in my brain. So the point is not to minimize the amount of work, but to maximize the depth and breadth of my learning, which requires repetition and a thoughtful approach to how we do that practice. Let's do exactly that with our second entry. So now we're going to move down to the second entry of B. Let me test my memory. This is an active recall process. The point of the example is not to get an answer. The point is to strengthen the neural network in my brain that encodes this particular definition. Let me do that by actively recalling the definition of matrix column vector multiplication via dot products. To get the second entry of B, I'm going to take the second row, transpose it, and then dot it with the vector x. In other words, B2 is going to be the second row of A written as a column vector dotted with X. Let me think about the second row of A. A was a 4 by 3, which means the second row is going to be A21, 
A22, A23. When I transpose it, it's going to be A21, A22, A23 as a 3 by 1 vector. When I then dot that with a vector x, I'm going to have A21 times x1 plus A22 times x2 plus A23 times x3. Do you see me actively challenging my recall? Those of you at home that are less familiar might have to actually correct yourself, which is wonderful way to cause yourself to make mistakes and to strengthen your brain as you're practicing. At this point, we can just remember what the values were. A21 was going to be negative 1, x1 was going to be 5, a22 was going to be 7, x2 was going to be 2, a23 was going to be 6, x3 was going to be negative 2. We do each product individually, negative 5 plus 14 plus negative 12. Perhaps we say that negative 5 plus 14 is going to be positive 9. And then we see that positive 9 minus 12 is negative 3, so the second entry of our output vector is going to be negative 3. So far, we've gotten two full recalls. For those of you viewers at home, great thing to do. Pause this video. Test yourself in the same way. I've given you a template to do this. I'm going to do it audibly since you're paying me to teach you, so to speak. The third entry of my matrix vector product is going to be the third row of my matrix treat it as a column vector using transpose, dotted with the input vector x. So in this case, I'm thinking about a. This must be the third row of a transpose dotted with x. We knew that a was a 4 by 3, which means the third row is going to be a 1 by 3. When I take the transpose, it's going to be a 3 by 1. Let's think about that third row, a3, 1, a3, 2, a3, 3. When I take the dot product, I'm just going to multiply each part. A31 times x1 plus A32 times x2 plus A33 times x3. Let's go ahead and remind ourselves what these different values were. Well, we saw that A31 was going to be 0, x1 was going to be 5, A32 was going to be 1, x2 was going to be 2, A33 was going to be 2, x3 was going to be negative 2, which means we can do the math. 0 plus 2 plus negative 4. 2 minus 4 is, of course, negative 2, so the third entry must be negative 2. We go down to the last entry. Remember that the point of the example is not to get simple numeric understanding, but to create a strong neural network. One of the best ways to strengthen your brain is to do active recall, to really force yourself to try to remember, fail, correct yourself, and improve. Let's go ahead and do that. The fourth entry of our output vector, that's going to be the fourth row of A treated as a column vector using the transpose, dotted with the vector x. Remember that the fourth row of our matrix is going to be a 1 by 3. So when I take the transpose, it's going to be a 3 by 1. Let's think about that. a41, a42, a43, dotted with x, we get a41, x1, plus a42, x2, plus a43, x3. We do a quick recall on the individual entries. We know that a41 is 2, x1 is 5, a42 is negative 5, x2 is 2. A43 is negative 2, x3 is negative 2. When we do those calculations, we get 10 minus 10 plus 4. 10 minus 10 is 0. When we add 4 to that, the fourth entry must be 4. And we get to a place where we've done our calculations that we desired. We constructed the b equals ax by partitioning b into rows, and then thinking about each entry of b as the corresponding dot product between the row that we desire and the vector x. So here we said that row 1 dotted with this was negative 1, row 2 dotted with x was negative 3, row 3 dotted with x was negative 2, and row 4 dotted with x was 4. For young students that are just getting their head around the definition, the workflow that I just highlighted in my notes are the one that I would suggest for you all. I have seen a quote unquote faster way to do this. Particularly, one thing that you could do is actually to partition your matrix into row vectors and then calculate each one by just traversing the rows down this way. So check this out. Negative 3 times 5, 4 times 2, negative 3 times negative 2. That's exactly what we see here. Let's go down to the next one. Negative 1 times 5 plus 7 times 2 plus 6 times negative 2. So we traverse across and traverse down, and that gives us the second one. 0 times 5 plus 1 times 2 plus 2 times negative 2. And then we go down to the bottom one. 2 times 5 plus negative 5 times 2 plus negative 2 times negative 2. And those would give us our outputs. Remember, my whole thing as a teacher is that tests are stupid. Grades should disappear. The point of doing exercises is not to get a good grade in my classes. The point is to strengthen your neural network. This is a fast way to do the calculation, but it leaves so many of the underlying parts of the definition unexplored. And there's too much, in my opinion, going on for a novice thinker. It's much better to slow things down.
With that said, one of my favorite things to tell my students is see if you can do the same type of math in many different ways. Let's go ahead and search Octave Online. And the first link that comes up is our Octave Online link. Let's click on that. Here we see an online matrix calculator. First thing we'll do is we'll store A in memory. So we set A equal to negative three comma four comma negative three. Commas are used to delimit columns to separate column entries. Semicolons are used to delimit rows to separate rows. So we go negative three comma four comma negative three. Semicolon that gets me down to the next row. Negative one comma seven comma six. Semicolon zero comma one comma two. Semicolon two comma negative five comma negative two. And then the semicolon out, uh, suppresses the output. So when I push enter, I get that. We'll now save the column vector x as five semicolon two semicolon negative two. And I'll push enter. Remember, a times x is the vector that we want. Here we see it's negative one, negative three, negative two, comma four. I want to go further than that. Let's call b. We'll set b equal to the zero vector. So we'll say this is zeros, and we'll say that it's a four by one, since that's the size that we want. And then we're going to set the first entry of b to be the dot product between, let's go ahead and do this, the first column of a. In octave, the transpose is going to be the little single uh, quotation mark. So if you look right next to your enter or return button, there's two quotation marks if you shift and a single one if you don't shift. If you hit that single, that gives you the transpose. And we're going to dot that with x. Notice that, that would give me negative one, which is what I want. Let's go down to the second entry. Remember that the second entry of uh, b is going to be the second row of a dotted with x, which we're going to use the dot function. So if I push enter, I get negative three. We'll do the same one for the third one. So we'll go down this way we get negative two. And then the fourth one, just to kind of bring it home, when I take the dot product of the fourth row of A, transpose with X, do this. One thing that's kind of fun is if I take the transpose out, Octave still allows me to do that dot product, which formally speaking in mathematics, we haven't allowed ourselves to do. We haven't thought about dot products between row and column vectors. We'll talk more about how to deal with computer code in my MATLAB class. The point of this particular example is how to implement each individual calculation using the dot product as given in the definition and verify that the work that we did by hand matches the output of our computer. So we feel a little bit more confident that we haven't made a silly arithmetic error. That leads me to my community challenge for today. We see that we're running the same exact operation multiple times. Could you define a for loop structure for this program to actually implement the exact definitions that we've done running through using a for loop? We're going to get an answer to that in my MATLAB class. For you all, I leave that as a sweet piece of candy to chew on for a bit. And with that, we're going to transition into discussing the algebraic properties of our matrix column vector operations and actually use the two different definitions to explore what those algebraic properties mean in practice. I'll see you in the next video.